Hello everybody, this is Cameron Snow with Dynomics.com. So in this video, I'm going to be covering our pore pressure analysis module. So to access the pore pressure analysis, uh, once you have a project open, just come to the uh, module selection menu and select pore pressure. And then once you're here, you'll be presented with the uh, following display where we have gamma ray, our total and effective porosities. We have a track of V clay, uh, resistivity, sonic. We have our sonic and density porosities. Then we have our uh, pressure interpretations, and then we also have an overpressure track. And I'll be going through each of these in a bit of detail uh, in this video. So to start off, uh, a couple of important calibration points here. So for example, we have the hydrostatic pressure gradient and the lithostatic pressure gradient. The uh, hydrostatic pressure gradient, that is the uh, pressure exerted by a column of water. Uh, so this is shown here in this blue line uh, called hydrostatic, that's the curve name. And then the lithostatic pressure gradient, this is the pressure that's exerted by the uh, rock column that is sitting on us. And this is called lithostatic. So the hydrostatic pressure, this is calculated purely from the hydrostatic pressure gradient that you input, whereas the lithostatic pressure gradient uh, we try to preferentially calculate that from the density curve uh, if that is present. And if that's not present, then it's calculated using the lithostatic pressure gradient that you have entered. We have a parameter for a V clay cutoff. So this V clay cutoff, uh, this is for the Eaton methods. So with the Eaton methods, you have to uh, determine uh, if a reservoir is shell or not shell because the method is only applied to shells. And so you'll need to set a value for that. Uh, the default value is around 35% V clay. And once you have set that, uh, the portion of your uh, data that meets that criteria will be highlighted here in red. So we can see that we have this red curve. Uh, once we get here into this section, it is low clay, so not suitable for the Eaton method. Uh, back into this section, high clay, so it's highlighted red again. Um, and you'll notice that the uh, results from the Eaton curves are only shown in those highlighted intervals. Uh, outside of those intervals, you'll essentially have to uh, impute what the pressure should be from a uh, hydrostatic pressure gradient. Um, you'll have a drop-down selection menu for the uh, method you would like to use for the, quote, final pore pressure. So you can either use the Eaton Sonic, Eaton Resistivity, or Popilski methods. And for those Eaton methods, you have the choice of the uh, Eaton method or the modified Eaton method. Um, so let's start in with the analysis. So if we're evaluating the Eaton's method uh, via Sonic, there are two parameters that need to be set. These are the Eaton exponent and the, uh, the normally compacted Sonic value. Uh, so here we can, we can see that we have uh, our Sonic curve shown here in this track. And what it is we'll need to do is we'll need to set that Eaton exponent. We'll need to set the, uh, the value for Sonic in a clay. So let me just show you how this works. If I come over here and let's say I change this to a value like 50, for example, which is not a very good value, what it'll show us is it'll show us that, hey, that, that's a value that's very low relative to Sonic. It would be predicting significant overpressure throughout this entire interval. And what it is we want to do is we really want to draw our that DTN value right through the middle of the distribution of our sonic log in a shell interval. And so that value in this well that, that seems to work pretty well is a value of about 90. And we can see this puts our calculated uh, Eaton result right on a hydrostatic pressure gradient. And I happen to know in this area that, that this shell is not overpressured and that that would be a good interpretation. Now, as we look down the log, what we see as we move into this organic shell, that we actually do see a little bit of overpressure here calculated by the Eaton Sonic method. And, uh, you know, this is not unexpected. This is an organic shell. It is in the maturity window. Uh, and in this area, it actually has been unroofed a little bit. So it makes sense that we expect to have some overpressure uh, in this shell. 
and that actually corresponds well to some of the uh, drilling uh, responses that we've seen where, where there has been a need to increase mud weight in this zone. So that is how you set the Eaton method. With the modified Eaton, there are uh, three parameters. You need to set the Eaton exponent. The, uh, there is a B exponent for the normal compaction trend line, and you need to set a, um, an initial DT, and that's like the DT value at the uh, mud line. So uh, these are the default values that are listed here. Um, in terms of calibrating this, uh, probably one of the best ways to do this is to find a, a zone where you know it should not be overpressured and then um, modify your inputs to where you have a good match to hydrostatic and then see how that affects you uh, here. So um, r right now it looks like we are a little low on that uh, DTO value. So if we were to increase that uh, just a little bit now we're going right through the middle of that trend once again we are on a hydrostatic trend line and now we are uh, once again calculating a similar amount of overpressure via both the eaton and modified eaton sonic methods uh, here for this organic shell interval uh, I, I i tend to like just the uh, normal eaton method uh, for this particular area that i'm working it, it seems to work quite well so i'm going to switch back to that for the resistivity, uh, once again, we have the choice of the uh, Eaton resistivity and the modified Eaton. So let's just start off with the Eaton resistivity. Uh, so, so what we need to do here, it's a very similar process. Uh, it only works in the shells. And so what we need to do is we need to set a, uh, a normal resistivity value for our shell. And uh, the default value is three. That looks a little bit high. We want it to go right through the middle of this trend. I'm gonna set that at about 1.8. And once again, that goes right through there. And we are calculating essentially a normal gradient through this zone that I know is normally pressured. Now, as we look down the well log, what we see is that the uh, resistivity um, is <clears throat> severely under predicting our pore pressure in this organic shell. And that is something that is uh, essentially ubiquitous in organic shells. If you think about an organic shell, it has excess resistivity uh, compared to inorganic shells due to the fact that uh, it has organic matter, which is uh, being converted into hydrocarbons. That increases the resistivity, and that increase in resistivity essentially creates a mask on the pressure. So we're unable to adequately predict pressures in these organic shells using the Eaton method. So that's just a uh, caveat to watch out for. Uh, for the modified Eaton resistivity, uh, very similar in nature to the, um, to the modified Eaton method for Sonic. You'll need to set a, uh, an exponent value, a normal compaction trend line value, and the initial resistivity value. Already have those parameters set here. Uh, once again, this method still fails in an organic shell, and that's just one of the weaknesses of the method. It's something to be aware of if you're working with organic shells. We do have an option here to temperature correct the resistivity. Um, you know, this is, uh, some people like to do this, some don't. If you temperature correct the resistivity, you will need to go in and uh, reset your values for the, uh, for the initial resistivity value and the normal resistivity value. Um, but that's a good way to help uh, evaluate what the temperature effects on the resistivity may be, um, especially if you're working in an area that is known to be very high temperature. So we have one final method uh, that we can use here, and this is the, it's called the Popilski uh, method. This was published uh, in an Ertek paper in uh, 2019, I believe. Uh, and this is a method that came out of Conoco. So the Popilski method, it utilizes the difference between the sonic and the density curves, or the sonic and density porosity curves, I should say. And this uh, has the advantage that it gives us a continuous uh, evaluation of the pore pressure. And so uh, this does require us to set a, uh, a few parameters and it also has one prerequisite. That prerequisite is that we need to have uh, ran and calibrated our mineral inversion. So we need to make sure 
that we are satisfied with the uh, quality of our uh, reconstruction on both the density and the sonic curves. Uh, but once we have that, uh, we can come over here and this method is actually quite simple to use. Um, what, what it will do is it will evaluate the implied uh, sonic porosity from the mineral inversion. It'll take the implied density porosity from the mineral inversion and it will compare those two. And it's important that we do this out of the mineral inversion results uh, because that accounts for both the uh, a running grain density and the equivalent to that for sonic, which would be a, a sonic or a, a grain transit time, uh, one, one might say. Um, and this calculates a running profile. Now that profile, when it comes out, it needs to be scaled. So <clears throat> what you should do is you should enter a minimum observed pressure and a maximum observed pressure. And uh, so let's say, for example, our minimum observed pressure within our statistics window here is around 2000 PSI and our maximum is around 5500 PSI. Uh, what, what this would do is it would then scale our curve to the uh, to the minimum and the maximum. And what you can see that does, it means we are very slightly overpressured here in this upper shell and we uh, have a bit more overpressure here in the in the lower shell. Uh, in terms of where you get this calibration, um, you can get that calibration looking at things like RFT pressures. You can get it looking at, uh, you know, things like shut-in pressures if it's a producing zone. You can get that from your drilling and completion in engineers because they'll they'll be uh, very familiar with with uh, some of those those pressures as well. Um, you know, so it, it's just important to have good calibration there. Once again, I like to try to find a zone that I know is not normal pressure, get a good calibration to hydrostatic there, and then evaluate, uh, you know, this curve from that. And then once we have those methods calibrated, um, we do calculate an overpressure curve. Uh, so this overpressure curve, this is just the difference between the calculated pressure and hydrostatic. Uh, so you know, uh, where it where it is equal to or less than the hydrostatic, uh, we have a value of zero. Where it's above hydrostatic, it calculates a slight overpressure. So if we uh, look at this, um, so right now I'm showing it for the Eaton Sonic method. If I flip to Eaton Resistivity, uh, what we'll see is that we have a bit more overpressure here in the upper that's being predicted. And you'll see that because it doesn't work here in the organic shells, we are under predicting that. And then with the Popilski method, you'll notice that we have uh, pressure essentially calculated uh, about everywhere. Now, you know, we could maybe calibrate this a, a little bit more in this well um, to eliminate the overpressure here in this upper zone. But you'll also see that showing a slight amount of overpressure here in this part of the Alston Chalk, a little bit here in the Eagleford, etc. Um, and that's because it gives us a continuous profile, whereas the Eaton method only gives us data points within those uh, shell intervals. Okay, so uh, that is it for the pore pressure module. I hope this was useful to you. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me at support at Thank you.